So, why are we here? What is the purpose of our life? Hmm? <coughs> And what are we doing in this body? Huh? Why are we born? We forgot everything because we are already born. Yeah? <clears throat> And just do all the same things that everybody else does. Yeah? Looking around, these people do this, that people do that. Yeah? And that's what we do, just follow the herd. Huh? Ask yourself, it's important, what is the meaning of, what is the purpose of your life? Huh? When you came to be born, you know, I mean, you had a purpose. Yeah? Most of us, yeah, who are spiritual seekers, have a purpose for this life. And we remember it. If not, try to remember it. What is the purpose of your life? Why did you get born here? Yeah? Why did you get born in the country that you were born? Yeah? And what is the purpose of your life? Yeah? I mean, ask yourself these questions. Yeah? <clears throat> Just walking around like zombies, yeah, doing the things, yeah, like following our greed, following our hate. I mean, we are we are human beings, yeah, or we call ourselves human beings. If we are, you know, that is a question. Yeah, are we human beings? Yeah? Ask yourself, what makes a human being a human being? Yeah? Being self-conscious. Yeah? Being aware of what he's doing, why is he doing, what kind of effects that doing has. No matter if it is in thought, no matter if it is in words, no matter if it is in action. That makes a human a human being. Otherwise we are just really just like zombies or robots. It is important for us yeah, to reflect upon that often. Otherwise, I mean, we lose the motivation yeah, to practice. Yeah? I mean, you want to stay in the hamster wheel? That's fine with me. Yeah? Going round, going round, going round. Yeah? The hamster wheel stands for the samsara vatta, yeah? for the death, yeah? for the cycle of birth and death. Born, die, born, die, born, die. Not always as human beings. A human birth is very difficult to get. Huh? Listen to what the Lord Buddha said. A human birth is very difficult to obtain. The human birth is also the jumping board yeah? outside of, this, of the cycle of death and birth. Yeah? Don't forget that. It's precious. Yeah? Human life is a precious one. The other difficult thing is, yeah, and none of us were lucky, 
to be born as a human being and, and, and to meet the sasana, the true religion. Yeah? I mean, we had to come. Yeah? We weren't born in a country that had the true sasana. Yeah? We were born in a country that didn't have the true sasana or the true teaching of the Lord Buddha. But we've finally made our way here yeah? after 20, 30, 40, 50 years yeah? to come here to this place yeah? to find the true sasana. Yeah? It is very difficult. Yeah? That's what the Lord Buddha teaches. Yeah? Becoming a human being yeah? and then finding the true religion are two very difficult things. And then meeting the Lord Buddha or meeting an Arahant is even more difficult. And some of us have met an Arahant. Yeah? So why do we waste our time dilly-dallying around? Hmm? Not prepared to fight. Hmm? Because fighting the Kalesas, that is our task. That's why we are dead. And that's why we come here to practice. Fighting that, what constantly tells us what to do, yeah? what to like and what to dislike. No? Just, just sit down, close your eyes, you know, and then you hear that voice. Yeah? I need this, I need that, I don't like this, I don't like that, that food is not okay, yeah? and so on. Yeah? These are the Kilesas talking in our head. Yeah? And they tell us, you know, it's me, it's mine, it's myself. Yeah? But there is something that listens to this voice, that knows that there is this voice. Yeah? Did you notice yet? Something that knows that there is a thought, that knows that there is a feeling, that knows that there is a body that knows a memory comes in or an association comes in, yeah? and that, that knows that there is consciousness. Yeah? That one that knows, or that one who knows, that is the true essence of the citta. Yeah? But this true essence of the citta is hidden by the kilesas that tell us, ah, Let's make a break, or oh, I don't like this, you know, or oh, it's too hot, or oh, it's too cold, yeah. <clears throat> oh, I want this, or oh, I dislike that, yeah. That's the voice of the Kilesas. And there's somebody within us, you know, who hears that. Yeah? And it can become very clear when we do our meditation, yeah. Anybody not heard this voice yet? Yeah? Then listen very carefully. Just sit down for five minutes, close your eyes, yeah? and all these thoughts of I pop up. I want this, I don't like this, I want that. Yeah? This is not comfortable, that is not comfortable. Yeah? But coming back, yeah? I mean... Now that, now that we have become monks, yeah, I mean, we live the li life of a monkhood, yeah, and we get comfortable with it. Yeah? And so our motivation declines day by day to put more effort in the practice. Because we are forgetting that there is death that is waiting for us. Yeah? There is death. What are we going to do? Yeah? When we come close to death, then we realize, I mean, we haven't practiced enough. Yeah? And then we see, you know, we wasted our time. We just did this, did that, yeah? Wasting our time, killing the time, waiting to die. Yeah? Without having any, yeah, any impact on the Kilesas to reduce their power. Yeah? So think about very carefully. Yeah? I mean, here it is a perfect place to practice. Yeah? At the moment, we do have some work, yeah? but that's about it. Yeah? 
And normally we don't have anything going on. So, is it so boring to practice? And who tells you it's boring to practice? Who tells you that you are tired? Yeah? Who tells you that you're exhausted? Huh? The Dhamma? Does the Dhamma tell you, oh, I'm so exhausted, I need some rest? The Dhamma is constantly striving. Dhamma never knows a rest. Yeah? Sometimes we even have to stop the Dhamma because it doesn't know how to rest. <clears throat> so remember, yeah? Remember this very well, yeah? I mean we came here with the intention to practice, yeah? And because of the life that is pretty much very comfortable, yeah? We forget this intention. And we just live this life and think, you know, by living this life as a monk, yeah, I mean, we get somewhere. If we don't practice, if we don't fight, yeah, for instance, fighting, you know, fighting the hindrances, you know, when we are sitting meditation or walking meditation, fighting boredom, fighting sleepiness, fighting drowsiness, yeah, not knowing, yeah, and then constantly giving in. Giving in to the pain, giving in to the drowsiness, giving in to non concentration, yeah? anything. Okay, okay, I can't concentrate anymore, let's get up. Yeah? Oh, I'm so tired, let's sleep. Yeah? I mean, we as monks yeah? should remember one thing yeah? we don't sleep when we are tired, we sleep when we are not tired. And then you sleep instantly. I mean, you just need to put your head on the... Yeah? It's not yet on the pillow and you're fast asleep. Yeah? When we sleep, when we are tired, yeah? <clears throat> we start to dream about this, dream about that, mm -hmm. ruining our practice, you know, from the day before. Yeah? So put a little bit of more effort in your practice, yeah? I mean, that's why you came here, that's why you became a monk. Yeah? <clears throat> Not just living the life of a monk. You know, one can one can confuse that. Yeah, I do understand it. One can confuse that. You know, I mean, going pin the pot, You know, going back, eating something. Yeah, and doing a little bit of practice. Yeah, and then doing this and doing that, thinking about this, thinking about that. Yeah, and then every day is the same. Yeah, and there's nothing, no progress in our practice. There's no sati developing. Yeah? And the sati is the key to all our practice. Sati is this knowingness, yeah? That knows when there's a thought coming in, that knows when there's a feeling coming in, that knows when consciousness is coming in, that knows, yeah? When one of the senses, you know, are contacted. Yeah? That's a sati that we need, and we need to develop it through samadhi, yeah? And through samadhi, I mean, we concentrate on the breath at the tip of the nose, yeah? Or we use the Buddha. Huh? And be aware if the Buddha is slow or fast, if it is, you know, if it is deep or shallow. Yeah? And with Samadhi the same uh, with, with Anapanasati the same thing. When we concentrate on the tip of the nose, then we feel the breath going in, going out. Yeah? We know that the breath is long, or is it short, or if it is deep, or if it is shallow, if it is rough, or whatever it is. Yeah? We know it is the in-breath, we know it is the out-breath. Yeah? And then we keep concentrating yeah? until the mind gets calm. Once the mind gets calm, it won't feel the breath anymore. Yeah? And that's where, where a lot of mistakes happen. And then we think, you know, the breath is gone. No. Actually, when our sati increases, when the knowing about the breath increases, we don't feel the breath anymore, but we know that the breath goes in. And we know it much better than before. It becomes so clear, becomes so obvious. I mean, you don't feel, you really don't feel the breath, yeah? But the sati has increased, yeah? And that is the way how to, uh, how to develop sati, yeah? 
knowing that the breath is coming in, knowing that the breath going out, knowing every stage of the breath, every slice of the breath, yeah? the in-breath or the out-breath. And the same with the Buddha. Yeah? Make it interesting, you know, because 100% interest is 100% concentration. And when we do that for a while, you know, we lose our interest. Huh? And it slips away and we don't notice it. And then we think, you know, the Buddha has gone, you know, has disappeared or the breath has disappeared. No, it hasn't. Our interest in the breath has disappeared. That's a problem. Yeah? Oh. And it's always, you know, no matter where you're looking. Huh? Am I over there talking? Huh? <clears throat> And it's it's the same, it's always the same problem, yeah. I mean we lose our interest, yeah? It's so difficult, it's so difficult. Somebody says that all the time, it's so difficult, yeah? And who do you think it is? It's the Kalesas who tell us it's so difficult, yeah? Or I'm so bored. So we don't actually see, yeah? We don't actually see boredom, yeah? We don't, you know, we, we don't realize that that, that there's a voice, you know, telling us how, how the Buddha is or how the breath is, yeah? Or making comments about it, or you should sit more straight, or you should, you know, you should uh, focus more on here or focus more on that. No, we keep our intention on the, on the tip of the nose and observe the breath there, yeah? And when, 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 when the sati increases, you know, the sati will go back to the heart. And it is a movement that we can feel. The sati drops back to the heart and then we just know the breath. Yeah? Because then the breath has become so subtle that we can only know it. Yeah? Until, you know, I mean, it becomes clearer and clearer the breath until it stops. And it really stops and that's where we get afraid. Yeah? And that we have to prepare ourselves for, for, for this kind of fear. Yeah? It's the same, yeah, it's similar to, you know, when, when the Buddha stops. Yeah? When our mind gets so concentrated that it can't even think one word. Only then, not when the Buddha disappears. I mean, I hear these questions so often. Buddha disappeared, the breath disappeared, yeah. Can I now go in or what? No. We can only jump the moment, you know, I mean, our sati is so strong that it is easy for us to jump into the knowingness, huh? And that is called Apana Samadhi. Yeah? But some people, you know, get even afraid, you know, when they enter Upachara Samadhi. Because why? We lose the eye. The ego is gone in the Upachara Samadhi. That's why we feel so relaxed. That's why we feel so happy. That's why we feel so comfortable. Hmm? I mean, you, you, you know, I mean, you probably heard it or I mentioned it before, Descartes said, you know, kokido ergo sum. I think, therefore I am. And the moment we stop thinking, we are not there anymore. Yeah? And that is the beauty of the whole process. Yeah? We lose. Yeah? I mean, we come into a state with, where there is no more thoughts, where there is no memories, so there is no more worries, there is no more loneliness, there is no more fear. That's the state of Upachara Samadhi, when thought goes. And there's certainly no one who comments about, you know, what we experience. Yeah? Doesn't comment anybody, you know, I mean, nobody's commenting about, oh, that is so nice, yeah? Because if we think this thought, that is so nice, I mean, we are not in Samadhi, yeah? We are in thoughts, yeah? Just like, just like the rest of our life, we're constantly in thought. We, we go someplace and we think about this place. We, we meet some people and we think about these people instead of actually recognizing these people, yeah? who they are or the, or the locations where we are, what they are. Yeah? Because we constantly think about it. Yeah? And that's why Upachara is, Samadhi is so important because then we stop thinking. Yeah? And then we, how can we not be happy? And that is, that is one, one side effect of the Upachara Samadhi, yeah? that we are happy, that we are relaxed, that we, that we are in a safe house. We really feel completely safe. Nothing can bother us there. Yeah? 
even though, you know, I mean, the senses are still working, but, you know, nothing bothers us. It is like they're so far away, just like the moon, yeah? The sounds are so far away, and, and it gets even, you know, the more we concentrate in Upachara Samadhi, I mean, the further away it gets, until everything disappears, all the senses disappear. Hmm? <clears throat> And that's the beauty of it, but it's just a side effect of our practice. Yeah? The main purpose of our practice is to develop the sati, to develop this knowingness that knows about anything. Yeah? And when this stupid thought comes in, you know, I should, I should meditate like this or I should meditate like that, or I'm not sitting right or I'm sitting wrong, you know, I mean, we should instantly notice it and know it's a kalesas, yeah, trying to disrupt our practice. And we should reflect, yeah? And no Buddha said, you know, we should reflect about the body, yeah? Why are you in this body? Ask yourself the question. What are you doing in this body, yeah? Before, before you came to earth, you know, you weren't in this body, yeah? Now you think you are the body. Yeah? Because people, you know, who, who are born in the car and die in the car think they are the car, yeah? Because they don't know any other reality, yeah? But when you get into Upachara Samadhi, I mean, you know at least another reality, yeah? It's a, it, it's a world or it, it, it's a realm of existence, yeah? They're just things are, as they are, yeah? Nobody tells us what they are and how they are, if we like them or if we dislike them. Because there's no dislike and, and likes at that time. Yeah? That's why we feel safe. That's why we feel happy. Yeah? And then we can see, you know, that all these likes and dislikes, you know, make us actually quite unhappy. Yeah? These worries, you know. There's no future. There's no past. In this moment, you know, I mean, it is, you know, it's just being. Yeah? And we can't deprive ourselves of this happiness. And we can't deprive ourselves of this practice. Because we need it, you know, that the path, yeah, out of the hamster wheel that the Lord Buddha opened for us is Sila Samadhi Panya. So, we keep 227 rules as monks, the lay people who are here in the monastery keep eight precepts, yeah. That's required, so we don't have to worry about it. <clears throat> and then Samadhi, Sila Samadhi Panya, Samadhi <clears throat> the ability to concentrate on one point yeah, and stick to it yeah, and know about the object that we are concentrating on, that's a madhi. Yeah? And panya is investigation. Yeah? And investigation can start, you know, why was I born, you know, where I was born? Yeah? Why did I, I, why was I born in the first place? Yeah? <clears throat> and what is the purpose of my life? Yeah? Or what did I do? Yeah? Going back through, you know, through time, yeah? Going back when we came out of the womb, you know, <coughs> learning to walk, learning to talk, yeah? And learning to think. Until we were 15, until we programmed this robot, yeah? This, this body, this biological robot, yeah? And then, you know, I mean then, and then what did we do, huh? We put autopilot, we put our, yeah? We put our robot on autopilot, just like the pilot, you know, when he flies a, flies a, um, what is going to be, airplane, yeah? puts it on autopilot now. I mean, 50 years ago, there was no autopilot, yeah? I mean, he had to, to be sitting there all the time, yeah? And observing, you know, all, all the meters, you know, from all directions, yeah? Now you can put it on autopilot, yeah? And we put our, we put our, you know, human life on autopilot and just run it, yeah? Until, it crashes, yeah, until we get into a situation that is so uncomfortable that we think we have to do something, yeah. And then what do we do? No, we're not getting rid of our programs. No, we just uh, change our programs so that they don't inflict any harm on us. That's what we do, yeah. We change one program, you know, that led us to a crash with another program, yeah, that Hopefully, it doesn't lead us to a crash. And 
I think you, every one of you notices, you know, I mean, we constantly, you know, we constantly come against the Achilles and against our dislikes, you know, where actually, you know, where it actually shows, you know, our conditioning is not right. Our programming is not right because we are reacting. Yeah? And that shows us, or it should show us. Yeah? For instance, when the Ajahn scolds us, you know, I mean, what is our reaction? Yeah? Negative reaction, defending, yeah? <clears throat> Or not wanting to know sometimes. Yeah? That's why the Ajahn scoped us. Yeah? To know, you know, there's Dukkha. Yeah? Yeah? And for you to know, I mean, you just, you know, you just hit, you know, hit one of the check in the box, yeah? That came out, yeah? A reaction that came out, a negative reaction that came out. But you, you're probably so used to, to the check in the box that comes out all the time, you know, that you don't even worry about it. Huh? Uh, I mean, that's why it is there. Yeah? It shows us there's something wrong with our programming. Or, yeah, in the end, you know, there's something wrong with co- being conditioned. Yeah? I mean, Nibbana is called the unconditioned. Yeah? So, I mean, in... in, in in our long time practice, you know, I mean, we should slowly uncondition ourselves. Yeah? If, yeah, then, uh, yeah? if I see my mother, I react like that. If I see my siblings, I react like that. If I see my lover, I react like that. Yeah? If I see my boss, I react like that. Yeah? That is conditioning. That's called conditioning. Yeah? If I see my achan, I react like that. Yeah? That is conditioning. Yeah? Or, you know, if I see my archer, I have to protect myself, you know, I have to put on a shield, yeah, so that nothing can come come through. Hmm? And one of the shields can be, you know, not wanting to hear what the archer says, yeah, only half, you know, half hearing it, yeah? yeah, that's blockage. That's not, you know, I mean, that, that is not, you know, sati, that is not awareness of what is going on. That's trying to block the things, you know, that we, <coughs> we find, you know, uncomfortable. Yeah? But actually we should be, just like, you know, when we sit in samadhi, we should be happy, you know, when there's pain coming up, yeah? Because then we have a steady object to investigate it. And our interest doesn't lose it because it's constantly bothered by the pain, yeah? So it's an object, you know, that is steady. Yeah? And it's the same thing, you know. I mean, if something is uncomfortable, it is easier to deal with it, yeah? When you just block it off, yeah? When there's pain, you know, we get up, you know, and the pain is gone and we don't think twice. What kind of magic trick is that, yeah? We can't sit anymore. We think, you know, we die when we sit one minute longer, you know, then we get up and there's no more pain. Hello, yeah? Don't you think the clays has tricked us, huh, in getting up? So know what, what is going on within your meditation, yeah? Know why you get up. Each time when you finish your meditation, know why you get up. What kind, you know, what kind of processes, you know, were there before? Instead of thinking about this or making a break or doing this, yeah, think about it, yeah? What came before? What, what actually, you know, what was the decision? Why did I make the decision to get up? Hmm? And what came before, before that, until we find the, the stone of the aval- that causes the avalanche? And the avalanche is getting up. It's one of the avalanches. Yeah? You see, sati, sati, knowing, yeah? reflecting. I mean, the daily reflection, you know, gives us the tool, you know, to be able to to retract or retrace, yeah, our decisions, yeah? or our moods, or our feeling. What came before this feeling? What came? What you know? Was it a thought? Was it a memory? What came before this memory? Or what came before this thought? And what came before that? What came before that? Until we find the stone. Yeah? It rolls very fast, you know, 
And everybody who has seen an avalanche in her, I mean, it is created by a small stone. And that is the cause, yeah? And any kind of emotion that we have is an avalanche, yeah? Already on its way. Maybe you can block it, you know, when you see it's coming. Ah, okay, yeah? And then stop, budo, 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 yeah, stop it, yeah. Because the rolling nature is, you know, I mean, go, go, going on, going on, yeah. <clears throat> but when we're going on with our thoughts, going on with our memories, but when you stop memories and thoughts, you know, I mean, the avalanche stops, yeah. And maybe we can handle it then. Yeah? Then we can look it, you know, and then we, we roll back, you know, and, and see what, what caused it. So why, 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 yeah? Why are you here, huh? You forgot it, huh? Just dilly dallying around, you're just waiting for death to come, huh? Is that, is that it? Waiting for death to come? Doing something, you know? Getting up, eating something, doing something, going to sleep, yeah? Getting up, eating something, doing something, and going to sleep. That's, yeah. Being a monk, you know, we are a little bit more constrained. Yeah? But that doesn't, that doesn't guarantee us, yeah, living the life of a monk, yeah, or living the life of a upasika or upasika, yeah. Doesn't guarantee us that we get out of the wheel. Doesn't get us, yeah, doesn't get, guarantee us that we find, you know, <clears throat> the door that the Lord Buddha opened for us yeah, and get out of it. Yeah? We have to do something, yeah? And we have to develop the sati. This 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 clear knowingness, yeah, that knows if there's a thought coming in, knows that there's a feeling coming in, yeah? and knows what happened before. I mean that's what we train, you know. I mean when we are on the Buddha we know, yeah. We know the Buddha, or we know the breath, yeah? And we know if there's a thought coming in, we know if there's a memory coming in, we know if there's a feeling coming in, but we are not swayed by these feelings or memories or thoughts, yeah? We just know it and we go back to, to with the attention to the breath or to the Buddha, yeah? So how can we not know, yeah? If you don't know, I mean, we are fast asleep, yeah? And, that, and then how do we differentiate ourselves from the rest of the people who are also fast asleep, yeah? who just walk like, you know, <clears throat> in, a, in, a, in a sleeping dream, yeah? That's walking, dream walking, yeah? Sleep walking, yeah? That's what most people do, yeah? Because they're not aware of it, you know, what is going on in their heart. Yeah? If we're not aware of it, you know, how can we remedy it? Yeah? That's a question you should ask yourself. You should find yourself motivation. Yeah? Think about it. You want to be born again? Huh? Just ask yourself this question. Yeah? You want to go through all, all our life again? Yeah? Because if you become a human being, what you said most certainly are not, yeah? We either go to the heavenly realm or we go to the to, 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 to the hell realm, yeah? Or to the ghost realm when we die. We don't become a human being, yeah? Not for a while, yeah? So this is precious, yeah? The human life is a precious one, yeah? And we shouldn't just waste it, you know, with doing this and doing that and dilly dallying around. Okay, today it is enough for today. Yeah. So if you have any questions, you can ask them now. Yeah? I have a question about the daily reflection. <clears throat> because here at the monastery, there's not so much external activity. So what That's I notice good. is when I try to really go into detail, like in the morning when we prepare the food, yeah. I have a lot of data. Like yeah. every conversation bit of you know, okay. about my reaction and that. Mm -hmm. But then like for example before sweeping and after yeah. after food there's like eight hours yeah. of basically only meditation. So yeah. um just know this some is highlights, like yeah. some like I mean meditation, we don't have to reflect very much, you know. I mean 
all what we do is, you know, before I sat down, you know, what, what was my thoughts, you know, when I came out, why did I come out, yeah? And then you go into the next meditation session. So, so you mean that we wouldn't do it at the end of the day, we would do after each session, right? You can do it after each session, you know, or you can do it, you know, in the reflection during the day. Because it's quite difficult. Yeah, I mean, so, yeah. yeah what happened in the meditation, we don't care so much about it. Yeah? We just, you know, what, what, what is our intention when we sat down? Did we just, you know, sit, sit down, you know, without any thoughts? Yeah? Didn't we have any determination now for one hour I want to stay, you know, with the Buddha? Yeah? Or with my contemplation? Yeah? That's what we check out, you know, in the daily reflection. Yeah? But, I mean, what, what is very helpful after the meditation, have, you know, I have a very short reflection. Why did I get up? Yeah? What happened during, what, you know, what were, what were the problems, yeah? Why, you know, why did I went off so often, yeah? But don't think so much about it, yeah? Just, just look at it, yeah? That's really important, yeah? Okay, any other question? Michelle? You have to fight, you know, I mean, otherwise, you know, I mean, you're a loser. Yeah? That, uh, the practice, Lungta Mahabo, you know, compare the practice, yeah, practice of meditation or contemplation, just like, you know, just like a boxer going into the, cha- going into the ring with the champion. Of course, the champion is clever, right? I mean, he knows how to box, he constantly kicks us out, yeah. So we go into the ring, he kicks us out. And what, what is our perseverance? That's where perseverance and effort, you know, and determination comes in. The moment we wake up, you know, from this blow, you know, we go back into the ring. Yeah? No matter what happened, yeah? And that's where we, where most of us just fail, you know. Ah, oh, today it's so difficult, you know, let's try tomorrow. Yeah? I mean, the difficult times in our practices, that's where we learn, yeah? When it is easy, you know, I mean, of course it is nice and it gives us reassurance, yeah? But we don't learn anything from it. We don't learn when we don't analyze the difficulties, yeah? Of our practice, yeah? When the practice is going difficult, that's where we learn, yeah? We learn about the hindrances, we learn about the kilesas who constantly neck around, yeah? We're constantly necking around, yeah? Yeah, and it's too hot. Oh, why is there no wind? Why is there war? Whatever, yeah? Oh, I can't concentrate, and so on, yeah? If you don't realize it, or we're constantly in thoughts, yeah? And then, it, of course, it is very difficult. We're so, we are so used, you know, especially when we are the younger generation with the, all these entertainment functions, yeah? with the smartphones, with the computers, with the internet. I mean, I mean, how can our concentration be, be on the point, you know, when we are constantly distracted? Yeah. I mean, just observe yourself, you know, going into the World Wide Web, yeah? I mean, are you aware of what you're doing? Why are you clicking this? Why are you clicking that? You know, why are you looking this up? Why are you looking that up? And see how that is perfect. It's a perfect, you know made for us, you know, to, to get completely distracted and lose hours and hours and hours, you know, and nothing, you know, I mean, we just get tired, yeah? Next day we do it again, because it, I mean, it seems to be, I mean, that's, that's a perfect way of to kill time. Because we have so much time as human beings, yeah? Huh? We have so much time of you as human beings. That's why we want to kill the time and just wait. We can't wait for death to come. Apparently, we are not aware of it, yeah? But that's, you know, wasting our time, killing time, yeah? We're not aware of it, yeah? And we think we have fun, yeah? If we do the reflection, you know, we don't have fun doing these things because they are distractive and they are disturbing, yeah? They're disturbing our heart. When we go into the peacefulness of samadhi, I mean, there's nothing disturbing our heart, and we feel relaxed, yeah? And then we don't want to get out, but we, you know, we are driven out by the kilesa, yeah? Who want to do this, who want to get, yeah, know about this, know about that, yeah? And that's nothing else in avicca. Wanting to know, not being able to know. Wanting to understand, not being able to understand. Okay? Enough for today, yeah? I mean, it's quite hot, yeah? You have any questions? 
Schorsch. Ah. Yeah. And Speak up. <coughs> and uh, experiencing some uh, strange thing because uh, in the Chankaman, uh, hmm. I can see uh, it's not me actually walking and yeah. on in the path. Uh, uh, it was only on the sitting meditation before I, I was feeling my moment I was going through. I see this moment, then I started in the Chankaman, then now even on the Hindu path, it's not even today, it's not me who walk, because I was seeing somebody is walking. Yeah. Uh, it's changed moment. So should I stop it or I don't know it's I mean just concentrate. I mean it's a byproduct, you know, of your concentration. Yeah? Don't don't concern yourself. I mean the second most problem is that we are concerned about the things that happen as side effects in the practice. I mean, when we sit down and practice, so I want to be with the Buddha and everything else is the affairs of the Kilesa. Yeah? So if there's a nice feeling arising, then we instantly go to this nice feeling. Then this nice feeling disappears, then we are disappointed, and then we go back to the Buddha. Then something else arises, you know, some sound, you know, or something else arises. Then we go to the sound, you know, we analyze it, we will get disappointed, and we go back to the Buddha. I mean, that's not practice. Yeah? You will know what is happening, you know, even if you go back to the Buddha. Yeah? We develop this knowing faculty. And this knowing faculty has to be, become strong so that this knowing faculty, you know, can, yeah, in the end, cut, you know, when we do investigation, cut the ties, cut the fetters, yeah. So don't be concerned about, you know, what is happening, you know, be concerned. Oh, when I go to this thought, I'm not with my Buddha. When I'm, you know, when I look at this feeling, I'm with the feeling, but I'm not with the Buddha, or not with the breath. That is the important thing. That's why we should, you know, determine, yeah? Now I'm sitting down, you know, and, and, and I'm with the Buddha or with the breath and nothing else. Everything else is a kilesa. Yeah? Slowly get it? Everything else is a kilesa. What we know is what we know, yeah? And normally what you know is what you don't forget. But if you concentrate on this knowing, yeah? I mean, then you're not with your Buddha, then you're not with your practice. Yeah, uh, now, now it kind of seems that in the eating, it's eating, because yeah. normally I, I cannot uh, differentiate, because normally I eat only five, five uh, mouthfuls sometimes. Five what? Mouthfuls. Yeah. So, uh, when I say, now I, I want to concentrate, uh, what should I eat? It, only eat seven more. I noticed few days. Yeah. But uh, now I feel it's full and yeah. I can't take too much of yeah. that and this that. Yeah. That's I feel uh, it's in the. Uh, in that is when you do some action, yeah? Ah. Uh. It is contemplating food while we take in food, yeah? And that, that belongs to that. But when you do meditation, when you do practice Chongkrama or, you know, even Pindapat, I mean, all what you do is, you know, you, you go back to the Buddha or you go back to the breath. Yeah, I am always with the breath. Yeah. Uh, I, when I try to, sometimes I go to thought. Yeah. So, but now, uh, when I try to get more into uh, my breath or Buddha, sometimes I can't uh, focus on the breath, so I didn't start a Buddha. Yeah. Then uh, I get more concentration, I feel. Yeah. Uh, now it seems, especially when the, for every action, because the ball washing is, is still not me, because I never, sometimes I, things never done, yeah. done by this, this person, I don't know what, what it's kind of, but I am seeing it separately. Yeah, but you're interested in that. I mean, though you see it, you know, I mean, you put in, you put some importance on that. Maybe there's some impo importance, maybe there's not. You will do that, you know, when you do your contemplation to see, yeah? No, but, but I am asking, Ajahn, then, uh, is somebody taking this uh, movement? I should take control of this, or I take, uh, normally I try to concentrate 
focus on the Buddha or bread. Yeah. So my question is, should I stop it? Because I can stop it, these actions. And what happens then? Then sometimes I uh, lose concentration. Because even Buddha or uh, this bread, uh, after a while I forget it. I mean, if you do chankama, yeah, let the body walk and concentrate on the breath. That is perfectly fine. Yeah, when eating, you shouldn't. Yeah, you should concentrate. On, yeah, I mean, why is the hand going there? Yeah, why is it going to the specific food and not to that food? Yeah, you should know that. Yeah, and when you look at your bowl, you should know already the the plan what you're going to eat with this seven mouthful or five mouthful or ten mouthful is, is already done. Now I kind of, uh, it's not a surprise because I use a kind of mixture. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. No, I mean, when, when you do walking meditation, let the body walk, you know. I mean, don't be concerned, you know. Be concerned about the Buddha. When you sit, also be concerned about the Buddha. And don't worry too much about, you know, if the body is not you, yeah. I mean, that is a realization that might come, you know, sooner or later, yeah. But this realization, you know, I mean, is really something you know, that goes very deep. Yeah, it is breaking the third fetter that you are not the body. Yeah, but you're trying to, you know, you're trying to bring up that's not me, that's not myself. Yeah, and that is very different from an inside. Yeah, that is contemplation. Yeah, that's what we use the principle of anatta to teach ourselves. It's not me, it's not mine, it's not myself. Yeah. The problem that then sometimes can happen is, yeah, if it's not me, you know, okay, just go ahead and do it. Yeah, that's not right. I mean, because we are responsible for the actions, you know, matter what kind of words come out, not why, not what kind of thoughts, you know, we allow, and what kinds of you know actions we do. Yeah. Yeah, that happened because a few things happened. Uh, I was thinking it's sati, but. Heart, something uh, say constantly because mm. in my focus there is something wrong. Then I go and check. Yeah. That's actually not done. But my chiton saying it's done. You don't need to worry. You don't need to worry. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, and if the chitta says things like that, then a red alarm lamp should, you know, light up and say, "There's something really yeah. to worry about." Then okay. I, because I once I uh, forget to. I, when I reflect, I, I, I am not sure I close the number one door or not. Yes, but you said, give me the key. Mm. But uh, the thoughts are the same. Mm. You, you did block it. You did. Yeah, yeah, I mean, so I mean, you might, you might notice, you know, your unmindfulness now, yeah? I mean that, you know, when you are unmindful, that's what happens, you know? You just go somewhere, you know, and you don't even know why you're going there, what you're doing there, yeah? And that, that's what you're noticing. It has nothing to do with the separation of the, of the eye and the body. Yeah? Okay? We have to be careful, you know. And you have to be responsible for any kind of action this body does. Yeah? Yeah, because now yeah. even try to start some work training, I feel like hardly stop it because. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So be, ca- be careful, you know. I mean, the Kilesas find all sorts of tricks, you know, to, uh, to entangle us, you know, in some affairs of the world, yeah. Hmm? Okay, then. Yeah, want to dilly dally around, huh? <clears throat> dreams are so nice, you know, I mean, we, we don't want to get back from our dreams, yeah? Love them, you know? I mean, we paint the future, we paint tomorrow, uh, yeah, tomorrow it's like this, tomorrow like that, or in 10 days it's like this or like that. And we don't even want to be in reality. But actually, reality is so refreshing, it's just new every moment. Yeah? Okay, so do your practice.